everyone, and welcome. Welcome to our monthly dive-in with Dom. Yeah, I'm Dominic Lieber. I'm a Diamond Approach teacher. This is a monthly forum that we do um, dedicated to the practice of inquiry. So in each of these sessions, we, we dive into a different angle of this practice, this beautiful practice that, uh, yeah, we're sharing and hoping people discover. So I see, yeah, nice to see you all here. I see some familiar faces. I think I see one or two new faces. Uh, I'm gonna put up your hand if you're you're here for the first time. Just wave it, yeah, okay. Missy Moore, Harold Williams, okay. Good, nice to see you, welcome. Yeah. So a couple of uh, things as we begin. Um, this is a public space and the meeting is recorded. And um, we're going to be exploring a really interesting topic this evening, a topic that I see a lot of people uh, struggle with and have questions about and misunderstandings about um, when it comes to inquiry. So we're going to work uh, and look a little at what we do with our emotional reactions and the different ways that we can explore um, emotional reactivity. So it's one of the things that brings people to inquiry, you know, people get interested in their inner world because of they have fear, they have anxiety, they have anger, they have hurt or pain, all different kinds of feelings. Uh, and of course, feelings are just a very big part of our inner experience. So um, today we're gonna we're gonna go delving in there. Um, the meeting will be recorded. There'll be a short intro, short practice, and then a little bit of teaching, and then you'll have an opportunity to do a short exercise, which you can do if you want to. If you don't want to do the exercise, please drop off at that point, and you can rejoin us about 20 minutes later. And for the exercise, you'll be put into a little breakout room with uh, probably one other person, maybe two. We'll see how we're going for time. Um, and what happens in the breakout room is not recorded. So the breakout room is confidential. That really is your place to just explore um, and see a little bit about uh, the angle we're exploring for yourself. Um, and then we'll come back together and we'll have some questions and comments and sharing. It'd be interesting to see what you're finding. So we have here, as usual, a fairly wide variety of experience levels. So there'll be people, I see some people sitting here that I know are relatively new to inquiry. And I see some people sitting here that I know have been inquiring for a very long time. So that's also one of the rich things about this session. Um, hopefully, wherever you are in your journey of inquiry, there might be something that's kind of useful for you. And whoever you end up inquiring with, there's an opportunity to learn something. Uh, to get something useful out of it. So we're going to begin um, with a short meditation, short practice, as we usually do. So I'm going to invite you to find a, a comfortable um, position for your meditation. Uh, meditation is uh, a great support when we're dealing with things like emotional reactions. And the particular um, practice I'm going to lead us into is not actually a sort of meditation proper, but is a sensing practice, practice of sensing our bodies, getting in touch with the immediacy of what's here um, in our bodies. So you can let your eyes close and take a nice breath, nice deep breath in and out. And as we begin, just notice where you are. Notice how you're feeling right now, what kind of state you're in at this moment in your day. Notice how your mind is. Your mind is busy or agitated or calm, quiet. And then bring your attention down to your right foot and begin sensing into the immediate sensations of your right foot. 
And feel your toes, the sole of the foot, the heel. Sensing into the whole of your right foot. Not thinking about your right foot, not visualizing your right foot, and not trying to make anything happen in your right foot. But simply getting in touch with the immediate sensations that you can as you focus there. And then sense into your right ankle, getting in touch with your right ankle and moving up your right lower leg, shin, the calf, sensing your way up to your right knee. Might feel physical sensations, bones, skin, muscles, aches or pains. Maybe you feel temperature, the sensations of your clothing. Really sensing into your right lower leg and your knee. And then start moving up your right thigh. Sensing the whole length of your right thigh. Contact with the chair, perhaps. Your clothing. The flesh of your right thigh. And all the way up to your right hip. Your right buttock on the chair. What's happening there? What can you sense? What do you feel? And then let your attention come to your right fingers. All the fingertips on your right hand, the fingers, the knuckles, thumb, palm in the back of the hand. It's like every little cell, every molecule in that right hand is waking up. Waking up as some kind of sensation in your awareness, in your consciousness. You're touching it. Touching your right wrist from the inside. And then letting that inner touch travel up your right forearm. Feeling each, each millimeter as you go. Sometimes you might find you can't sense anything, like there's a gap or a part of your body you can't get in touch with. That's fine. That's actually a sensation too. But then you just sense that, sense the the absence. Sensed into your right elbow. And then in that sort of curious, friendly way, sense your way up your right upper arm. How does your right upper arm feel? If you're not bringing all your preconceptions to it, what do you actually find there? All the way to your right shoulder. Front of the shoulder, the back of the shoulder, under the arm. The whole articulation of that shoulder joint. You might notice more qualitative sensations like does it feel juicy or fleshy or tight or dry, strong or weak, solid or flimsy? And 
And then move your attention and your focus across to your left shoulder. And we'll go down the left side. Sensing the left shoulder, shoulder blade, the shoulder, the front of the shoulder, shoulder girdle, collarbone, and then the shoulder itself. Sensing down your left upper arm. your left elbow and letting the awareness flow down into your left forearm and sensing your left wrist. The hand and palm and knuckles and fingers of your left hand. So you're really getting in touch. It's a matter of degree, turning up the light one more notch, turning up the awareness, the in-touchness, one more turn on the dial. And sensing your left hip, your left hip, your left buttock, the support of the chair, the contact with the chair, the weight of your body coming through your pelvis. Down your left thigh, into your left knee. And dripping down your left lower leg. I'd actually sense the awareness, the presence, filling up your body like a kind of media. Sensing your calf and your left ankle. And then your left heel arch and ball of your left foot and the toes. So now you've done this whole sensing loop, sensing your way around your arms and legs and sense both arms and both legs together. It's like a frame, frame of you for your experience. These sensations. Notice how it's affected you to sense your body in this way. Like how are you feeling now? And then add listening. So you're consciously sensing and then you're consciously adding listening. Hearing the soundscape around you, sounds in your environment of this meeting, your breathing perhaps. And then gently let your eyes open and begin looking. So you're looking, seeing your environment, but consciously including your visual sense. Consciously looking. Colors and shapes and textures, space. So sensing, looking and listening. Now see, see if there's a movement that your body would like to make. Something that might feel nice for you, stretch, uh, 
a breath, a glug of water, like what would feel really good for you? Now another question. Notice how you're feeling now, what sort of feelings have been around. And see, like, how would you express that? Like, however you're feeling right now, whatever that feeling is. So happy feeling, or frustrated about something, or bored or irritated, or curious. See what shape does your body take with that feeling? How does that feeling express? It might be a subtle shift in your posture. Might be a, an opening of your eyes in curiosity. Might be a tilting of your head in skepticism. It might be uh, and the letting letting something lull and let go. But you might find that there is a physical expression of how you're feeling that sort of fits, that expresses that. So I start us off with that because that's part of what we're going to be looking into this evening. So let's start from the beginning. When we're inquiring, right, what is this practice? This practice is the very simplest statement of the instruction is to get in touch with your experience, whatever it is, right, and to be curious about it, to explore it, to see what you can find out about to try to understand it. So get in touch and explore. That's kind of what we do. It's what inquiry is all about. And what you'll notice as you do that, you'll get more and more in touch with different dimensions of your experience. And you'll begin to notice different layers of it. sensations in your body, ideas and thoughts and beliefs and narratives and stories, impulses to do things, and feelings. Feelings, reactions, affects, emotions, that whole realm that we usually call the realm of the heart. So feelings are really central part of inquiry is like very difficult to really say to kind of to firstly you can't be fully in touch with your experience if you're not also in touch with what you're feeling and you can't really understand your experience if you're not recognizing your feelings and understanding them right coming to understand them like what are they what are they about? What are they? What effect do they have? Feelings and especially emotional reactions are really interesting because they tend to arise with a lot of energy. Yeah, they have a lot of, they can have a certain charge to them. And so that brings us then to one of the things that we learn when we inquire which is that we have to cultivate a capacity to allow our feelings, to be in touch with our feelings, to let them happen, to really feel them, and not to just completely be run by them. Right? So as you go about your lit life, if something makes you angry, for example, it's important to be able to Feel the anger, allow the anger, kind of get curious about the anger and explore it. And it's very important that you don't just 
blast the anger out all over whoever it is in your life that kind of brought it on, whatever it is that you're reacting to. So we have to learn how to, as I say, have our feelings, allow them, get curious about them, but not let them make a mess. Because part of what happens in the whole journey of inquiry, we get more and more in touch with ourselves, with our inner world. We start getting in touch with younger parts of ourselves. All different parts of our consciousness start emerging and coming forward. And the feelings and emotions and reactions that can start happen as happening as we engage on this journey um, can open up. Right? And we will find ourselves having not probably less reactivity, but possibly more. Feeling feelings we didn't know we had before. Before you didn't know you were so irritated about everything. Now you know. Now you can feel it. Right? Before you used to just walk around kind of mentally telling yourself to just get yourself together and get on through the day. But now you're actually starting to feel all the feelings that are happening there. Envy or jealousy or uh, longing, grief, anxiety, right? There's a whole range of emotional reactions that can be very, you know, challenging feelings to allow, to explore, um, to really come to terms with. But that is part of the journey. Right? Part of discovering the freedom of our inner world and liberating our inner world is being free to allow any feeling. In time, we want to be able to allow any feeling whatsoever to be able to feel it, not to make a mess with it. Right? Not because I feel jealous about so-and-so and that they were spending time with that person that I love or I care about. And I want to go and kill them or stalk them or whatever crazy thing I want to do. We don't go do it. But we can get really interested in the reaction that we're having and find out, like, where's that coming from in me? What's making that happen? And what we find with inquiry is that every reaction, every compulsive charged reaction, like, if you inquire into it all the way, you get to its truth. There's something true in the heart of it. There is something real in the heart of it, but it's arising with some distortion. Uh, so we don't want to, we learn to try not to act on the distortions. We recognize there's a reaction. There's something compulsive. I need to not just act on it and make a mess with it. I need to inquire into it and clarify it. Find out what's going on there. So you can see there's actually a very interesting and at times a very challenging balance to cultivate here. To be able to feel things and to allow the feelings and to be able to hold them. That's why the sensing arms and legs is so useful. You're sitting having a big reaction to something, right? You can sense your arms and legs. You're like, okay. I'm not going to lose my shit here. I'm going to just sense my arms and legs and take a few breaths. And that helps you find something that is present with the reaction and not just completely lost in it. Right? Sometimes that might not be the thing that works for you. You might have to find something else. But it's a good, it's a good go-to. It's a good possibility. Right? when you are actually actively sensing your arms and legs, even if you can't sense them, there is at least some part of your consciousness that isn't totally lost in the feeling. And that's the important thing, right? Then you're with it and not just swept away by it. So that's an important step. I kind of talk a lot about that in diving in the inner ocean. Uh, we're talk, talking about not acting out and learning to kind of hold our experience so that we can inquire into it, so that we don't just take that first kind of eruption of feeling, but we give ourselves time to clarify it and get to what's more real and more true. Now, 
when we come to our inquiry, when we come to actually sitting down with this feeling, what does this mean? Right? So we know we don't want to make a mess because you can usually see, you, you won't see it at the time. At the time, you feel like you want to act it out. You feel like you want to go and tell that person or you want to leave that situation because you're so hurt and you never want to speak to them again or you feel so afraid. You're absolutely never going to go anywhere near whatever it is that's making you afraid. So it feels very compelling, right? Well, compulsive means it, it feels compelling something in it like makes you want to really go along with it so in life we learn to not just go along with it to hold it but what do we do in our inquiry practice so one thing that you can do that is not acting it out is you can feel it Right? You can really feel it like, oh, okay, so I'm feeling this, whatever feeling it is, this envy, feeling envious, right? I feel so envious of that person. What, what's it like to feel that, right? So you can describe it. You can sense in your body what happens in your body as you allow that feeling, right? And describe how, how, does, it, how does it feel? What's it like? Do you feel the sadness or the hurt like Maybe it feels like tears welling up in your eyes or this hurt or burning sensation in your heart. Uh, so what, one of the things that you can do is you feel the feeling and you just keep talking about it. You keep describing it, seeing what it is. And part of the seeing what it is, right, is to see, like, what does it do? What is the effect of it? What is this feeling trying to do, trying to bring about? So I'm going to use anger as like a really good example. So I've seen people get into the situation where they're inquiring, and maybe they're inquiring with a friend, not with a maybe not so much with a the teacher. They're inquiring with a friend and they get into some kind, there's some kind of anger that's arising in their inquiry and they feel they have to kind of contain it. They don't want to actually allow the anger out. They don't want to, quote unquote, get angry because they have the idea that that's acting out. We're not supposed to do that. Yeah. If I really let myself rage, like the way that I'm really feeling, that's acting out, right? Isn't it? Isn't that acting out? So I shouldn't do that. That's not going to be helpful. But actually, you need to look at that. You need to kind of look at that a little more closely. Because within the confines of your inquiry space, to let yourself really express the feeling, to let the feeling move through you and to see, like to give it some embodiment, some gesture. Maybe you feel like you want to grab them and shake them like that, not your friend, whatever it is that you're inquiring into that, you know, is bringing this up for you. Maybe you feel like you want to just smash somebody, right? Some situation like, Somebody has upset you and you just feel like you want to smash things, right? Or you want to throw it across the room. So can you? Should you? Is that a good idea? Right? Do you, actually, for those of you who inquire, like, what do you do with this? What do you do with this? When you're encountering a strong emotional reaction that you're in touch with, do you express it? And the answer is, you know, to is it helpful or not? Really, as with everything, is it depends. So it depends on what you're doing with it, how you're approaching it. So if you let yourself express it as part of an inquiry, in other words, you're wondering, oh, okay, what is this anger? That's really interesting. I feel like I want to just smash something. 
wow, I wonder what that would be like. Okay, let me take this pillow and just smash it and find out what does that do? What does that allow to happen in me? All right? That's an inquiry. That is a direct exploration. You're allowing the feeling to move in your body. You're finding out how it wants to be expressed and what it wants to do so that you can find out about it, so that you can discover what it is actually trying to do. Oh, I feel like I want to just push them away. Let me do that. Let me just uh, uh, yeah. push them away. Or I feel so terrified. I feel like I want to grab them and just hold them close and, and keep them over here and not let anything go. Or I want to control them and make them do exactly what I want. I'm just going to make them. Right? You see what I'm doing? So it's possible to take any of these feelings and to give it some expression, but not just, you know, to just sit down and rant because you're feeling angry is not going to do anything. To just, okay, I'm going to get like, I feel really pissed off. and nah, rah, 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 rah. People do that. And it's really it's often not very helpful at all. But that is a totally different orientation to letting yourself go into it and find out what's true about it. Find out what, what does this really want to do? What happens within my psyche as I let this feeling do its thing as a very active, direct exploration? That is a totally different kettle of fish from sitting down and just running with your reaction. One is practicing with your reaction, inquiring into it, trying to find out what's true about it. What does it bring about? And while you're doing it, while you're expressing it, oh, I want to tell them this, or I want to tell them that, or I want to like run after them and sort of beg them to stay, okay, let me just feel into that. Like, where is that coming from within me? What if I just let that happen and, and see what is the part of myself that is being expressed here? So you're doing it not, how can I say, not to just do whatever the reaction is doing, you know, not to actually try and get the person or push them away or anything, but to kind of just feel what is what what is this movement? What does it bring about? When I let my anger rip, right? And then I sense myself and I'm like, wow, okay, how does that feel? My God, I feel huge right now. I feel enormous. I feel heat rippling through my body yeah or i feel this need and as i let myself feel this need and this holding on and it feels like the most intense kind of need and love all mixed in together like i love them so much and i just want them to and i can let myself feel that i'm like oh i so feel that need the love how is that coming through? What happens when I let myself hang on like that? So this is really kind of the core of what I wanted to point to. That that kind of expression within your inquiry is not acting out. That is not acting out. That is really continuing the inquiry, taking it into a deeper level. Now, I think it's fair to kind of, you know, you've got to practice, I want to say, not cause so much cautiously, but you've got to practice wisely with this, right? So you don't want to like charge into some kind of huge emotional expression and discharge and then kind of throw yourself for a loop. Uh, maybe you want to 
do it a little bit at first. You kind of express it a little bit. Let me see what it's like to just, oh, oh just give it a little bit of sound. Okay, that feels good. Oh, yeah, something feels really good about that. Right? So you allow yourself to find your way into the feeling, to let it come little by little. It feels like too much. You go, okay, whoa, that was a bit too much. That's kind of unsettling me a bit. I'm going to take a breather for a bit. Right? So you have those kind of options. It's really, in a sense, the tantric part of our practice. Inquiry is actually a very tantric practice. Every time you go into a feeling, into an emotion, and you let it happen, and you feel it, right? you are doing something tantric. You are liberating the energy uh, within that feeling so that you can understand it. Oh, wow, okay, so I allow, feel into that anger, for example, that's just brought all the strength. And it's funny, as I'm feeling that strength now, now that I've kind of uncorked it and let it flow, at first it was anger, but now it just feels like wow, vast, fiery strength. Or at first it felt like stubbornness, but now I just feel immensely solid. So every one of these feelings can be a gateway, a doorway, because there's something true in the middle of it. There's something real. Something real is making that happen. And you can understand that. Oh, okay, so I was feeling so angry because I felt so limited. And when I allowed that anger and I expressed it and I could let it come out, brought this expansion and now I don't feel so trapped and limited anymore. I feel big and expanded. No, well, suddenly the reaction is not even there anymore. You don't even feel angry anymore. So the reactions can bring about a kind of intra-psychic effect. It brings about a change within your experience, within you. And then suddenly you might find you don't have to do anything in the situation, or at least not what you thought you had to do before. Once that reaction has been allowed to accomplish, to bring about within your soul, within your psyche, what it is actually trying to do, and you've understood, you see that, and you get it, then usually the, your whole relationship to whatever the external circumstances changes completely. Uh, I just don't feel limited by that anymore. I feel big and expanded and I don't really care what they do. Why, why am I going to get annoyed about that? It's got nothing to do with me. Uh, so this is the... Uh, the area I wanted to address. And in a way, this kind of forms a, like a little, it's a little trio with the two, the last two that we did. So in the one, we looked at stories, right? Really the mind. And how do we not just reject the mind? How do we include the story, but include it in a useful way in the inquiry? Uh, and we looked at sort of what we do, our impulses, our problem solving, trying to figure out what kind of action do I take. And it's the same thing. How do we include that in our inquiry rather than letting it be just something else that isn't actually inquiry? And here with our reactions, our reactivity. How do we bring our reaction into our inquiry and use it? Because what's going on there is really important, right? Until you really understand and go all the way into the reaction and digest it, in a certain way, it'll just keep coming back. So that's probably enough said about that. And I want to give you a chance to go and just look into this a little for yourself. So um, 
I think what we'll do, you know what? Let's get in groups of three. I think three is nice. We've got just enough time. And I'd like you to each have five minutes. And in your five minutes, you want to just look into how do you inquire into your reactivity, right? And, you know, do you, yeah, do you, is it okay to feel it? What kinds of things are okay to feel or not feel? And how do you feel about expressing it in the exploratory way that I've described here? Right? How, how does that, what do you make of that? Is that something you recognize that you have done? Does it seem like a really bad idea to you? Do you see that you more often get swept away and lost in the reactivity? Right? So that's the other side is when we just get lost in it. So when you get lost in it and you're just emoting away and there's no presence and no real exploration, no real, you know, at that point, you're not really inquiring anymore. It's so the same as when people just run away with the story or they run away with the problem solving and they're like, blah, 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 blah. but it's not really anything happening. And it can be the same thing with just emoting. So we're not talking about just emoting. We're not talking about emoting for its own sake. We really are talking about allowing the emotion to come up and to be expressed as part of the living exploration. So, you just want to see, where are you with that? Do you recognize that possibility? Do you not? What are, the, what are the things that stop you? So five minutes each. That'll be 15 minutes. It's nice because you'll get to hear two other people's perspectives. And remember, if you're doing the exploration, if it's your turn, you're just doing it for yourself. Right? You're doing this for no other reason than just to see how do you, how are you with this? Yeah. If you are witness and somebody else is doing the exploration, remember you just stay completely silent. You stay on mute. You just be present with them and let them go wherever they go. Really, wherever they go is fine. Um, so there's no sort of interaction or uh, you don't want to jump in or try and therapize or advise or anything like that. Everybody is just exploring what's true for them. Okay, so 15 minutes, and we'll add a couple of minutes for coming and going, say five minutes for coming and going. So we'll be back here in 20 minutes, which will be at 8, let's say 8.30, uh, 8.35 my time. I guess it's, um, what's that? It'll be 7.35 UK time, yeah. 7.35 UK. All right. See you shortly. Enjoy. If you don't want to do the exercise, drop off now because otherwise somebody will put you in a breakout room and then somebody will get stranded without a partner. So see you in a bit. Okay. So welcome back. I'm curious what you found. So if you have any questions or comments or something to share, then um, please raise your electronic hand so you can press the react button at the bottom and then you'll see the raise hand button pops up. So yeah, how was it for you to look into this? Che, go ahead. Nice uh, to hear you here. <clears throat> Thank you. So this is a it was a really a great topic for me and also very challenging, especially mm. when you asked us to look at um, to be with the sensing practice while we have reactivity or something, mm. you know, like charge. Mm. Um, so, yes, the sensing practice is very challenging for me because, um, of course, I, I, I've inquired and my private teacher has, you know, say, well, can you feel your arms and legs? And I, I don't seem to give much credence to it. I'm just like, okay, since my arms and legs, but it almost feels like, what, what does that got to do with what, what is happening? 
because it feels like oil and vinegar. You know, it just doesn't seem to mix. No, maybe uh, it's oil and water doesn't mix. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. So it, that's, it, yeah. That's part of the benefit of it. That's part of the point. Oh, oh okay. Then maybe I don't like that, that it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Because the point if, is, I think that's not uncommon, what you say. And actually, yeah. I remember feeling something like that. Like, okay, I'm with this. I want to be with this particular content. What are my hands and feet or my arms and legs got to do with that? Like nothing really. Yeah. Yeah. But actually, the point is that what that's giving you is something in your experience that is not only the content that you're caught in. <laughs> Boy, I, I seem to not like that. It's like I'm up here, the fire is up here, and yeah. now you're asking me to, you know, like it feels very uncoordinated. You're asking me to chew gum and walk at the same time, and I feel like I can't yeah. do that. It feels like yeah. I'm going to yeah. be here where the yeah. heat is. Yeah. yeah, so it's a practice, right? Yeah. So what that means, what that practice looks like, every now and again, you might go, okay, so I'm feeling all this. This is where all the action is at. And let me just take a moment as I feel that, let me just, can I send, feel my hands at the same time? Yeah, can I feel as I'm with that, can I just check, okay, yeah, there's my hands, there's my feet. Mm -hmm. Okay, what, what happens? You know, what I happens? didn't realize that. I did not realize that detail that that was the purpose, was to kind of take me away from it a little not bit. Not to take you away. So this is, this is kind of the edge. So it, it isn't to take you away from it, but it is to kind of, if you like, open, because it's all your experience, right? It yeah. is actually all in your, your consciousness includes all of that, right? Yeah. There's stuff going on here, there's stuff going on here, there's stuff going on in your arms and legs. When we're completely riveted to one part of it, mm -hmm. we, can, we can get, not saying we are automatically, but we can get so completely sucked into that that like mm -hmm. it's almost like nothing else exists. Yeah. Right? Which is actually not true. Right? It isn't actually the truth. And what happens in that case is it can be very difficult to get perspective. Now, it's all well and good when it's something that you want to, you know, inquire into and you're all on fire and you just want to go for it. But if it's something really difficult, right, then it might be, it might be different, right? You might find yourself going, okay, geez, there's this thing coming up and it's like this huge amount of terror, right? And yeah, there's the terror, but to just feel the terror is like even more terrifying. Whereas to feel, okay, there's terror and I've got my hands and feet, right? I can sense that. It's like, okay, there's something here that is not just that. That can be very useful. Mm. Okay, well that, yeah, that's that's very helpful. That's um, mm. yeah, I felt like I translated that it meant that I was getting cheated by going to my arms and legs or incorporating mm -hmm. my arms and legs. You know, you were getting cheated. What do you mean? Because it was it was sort of taking removing me away yeah. from the heat. So I, there was a part of me like no, I. So there I was it with the heat, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, I see it. a lot of it is my interpretation of the. Yeah. yeah, great. So if you can see it not as a leaving that, but just slightly kind of widening the aperture, right? Just including a little bit more of something else that is your presence, because it's all mm -hmm. your presence, right? Yeah. And, and then you can go back to it, right? You you stay with what you got the fire to explore. That's great. And and see what that is by including that other con yeah the context yeah yeah, yeah. It'll just give you a little more resource for exploring what it is that you're really interested in yeah, yeah. okay well that that was very helpful that's great thank, thank you, you. Us, but yeah you're welcome welcome and then we have Ermtraut Ermtraut go ahead. Hello. Yes, I. Um, what is in me? I'm not identifying myself with it, but I am feeling uh, regret. Mm. 
uh, for, for things when you in your teaching brought up, you know, don't explode. I have done. And um, I regret to having done that. Mm -hmm. um, and but now... What uh, makes you regret it? What do you regret? Um, well, well, this... That I exploded mm -hmm. or that I just expressed my anger without having done what you just taught mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and and sort of i almost feel that maybe my children have backed off or at least my daughter has backed off because i've been sort of very curt or abrupt or whatever and and that regret is yeah in mm -hmm. me uh -huh. So it seems like your heart. So how is it to allow the regrets? Um, the, the sadness there. Yeah. Well, so sometimes, what's the sadness about? The sadness for, yeah, having, uh, having spoiled, um, Yeah, not having spoiled a relationship, but not having not having been nurturing about the relationship. Uh -huh. So that seems to mean that something in you wants to nurture the relationship. Yeah, and I wish I could turn mm. the clocks back. Uh huh. Yes. 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 So there's a sadness, sorrow. Yeah. But what makes you want to nurture the relationship? It, it, because they're my children and I love them. Oh, so it's the love. What if you feel the love? Not sure. The whole concept of love is hasn't been around when I was little and I, I don't actually know much about it. Well, Omtrav, one thing you know is that you feel regret that you might have damaged her or they or caused hurt in a relationship. And you know that you feel and it makes you sad and it makes you sad because you care and because you love them. Yeah. And I wish mm -hmm. I'd, yeah, yeah, it's like, it, it's something so there. Yes, right. So that's something you can stay with, right, to feel that. But what I just want to point out is how here, so there's regret, which is the emotional reaction here, right now, when you're having now. And you can allow the regret and feel the regret and See how your body responds as you do it. But as you keep exploring it, actually, the regret is there because of the love, right? So the regret actually leads you to your love. Okay. So that's what I meant when I said in the heart of every reaction, there is something true, something real. Right. Well, right. that makes me feel sad and tearful. Yes, right. So you can... Allow all of that, the sadness, the tears. We're going to move on now, but just okay. stay feeling your heart and letting all this move in you. Mm. Mm. Thank okay. you, Dom. Oh, you're welcome, Amtra. Thank you. Yeah, Devita. Hi. Hello. Um, for me, what in the inquiry, what initially came up was a lot of fear. A lot of fear. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's this fear of being stuck in that reactivity. Mm hmm You think? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, no, I know. <laughs> it's, oh, it's... you know. Okay, so that's what the fear is. So you're afraid of being stuck in the reactivity. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And, uh... mm. What does that mean? So the fear is that if you let yourself feel whatever you're feeling, that it'll carry on forever, that it'll never go away. You'll get stuck there. Uh, it's more of how overwhelming and big it gets. Uh huh. Right. Then it's gonna get so big that I can't yeah. hold anymore. Uh huh. Okay. So there's some belief here, some sense that the feeling is very big, and you won't be able to hold it anymore. Right. And it's very good to know that probably at some point that was true. Right. Like as little kids, like little kids can't hold their feelings. Like a little kid feels something that just, right, comes bursting out. And it's good to know and to begin to see that as an adult, who is practicing with her experience, you may just be able to do that. Right? You might be able. And to allow yourself to experiment with it bit by bit and to find out what's true. I think that is where I get stuck. Because uh -huh. it doesn't come bit by bit. Okay, it just comes bursting out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And has it done that's happened before? Uh, the inquiry? In inquiry, I think. No, an in inquiry. Give me a minute. I don't want to think. Yeah, take your time. An in inquiry is more like there's a lid on it and it's like all these it's like a pot that's boiling hmm. only what's with the lid and what flows out is just the overflow mm -hmm. right so the in a sense the kind of the possibility i'm pointing to so it would be good to feel that to see what's the lid and how come the lid is there Right, what's the lid doing? Right, and then in time, whether you need that lid, like what would it be to let it overflow, to let it come out consciously in your inquiry? And it's a thing with strong emotions and reactions because when we bottle them up from our life, then usually at some point they come exploding out and they tend to make a mess. Whereas if we can take the space to practice with it and inquire into it consciously, that's actually much less likely to happen, right? You're less likely because it's from bottling it up and bottling it up and bottling it up and pushing it down and not going there and not going there and not going there. And then one day that thing happens that just sends you over the edge, right? Whereas to let yourself kind of really feel it and explore it and express it in your inquiry gives you a chance to kind of work with it and digest it before it gets to that point. And so what also kind of really intrigued me was this, the physicality of it. Hmm. Because uh, in just therapy, there is one particular physical expression of my feelings that keeps coming up for me. Like my body just really wants to go and do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But again, it's just very, very scary. Okay. okay. If you don't want to say you don't have to, but 
but if you if you're willing to if it feels comfortable what is it what what does your body want to do uh, it's like a repetitive stabbing motion ah yes kind of stabbing motion uh -huh. just to have like a pillow or something and like a knife and just keeps stabbing at it oh yeah did you let yourself do that <laughs> oh so i wonder like what would it be like to like imagine you've got a knife have a pillow there and just to let yourself stab it in exactly the way that you want to Like if you just feel the possibility of that invitation, what does that bring up? A sense of liberation and also a sense of being frozen in fear. Both. Okay, right. Okay. So that's where your kind of your exploration is. But that's really the kind of the possibility here that there are all of these impulses that, you know, that can be like stabbing, strangling, or, you know, it can be quiet, can be surprisingly both vivid and very specific, right? The body knows exactly what you want to do. It's not politically correct on anybody's scale. But if you're actually just honest about it, there will be a very, there's probably a very clear thing that you just feel like you want to do. And to do that to a pillow is really okay, right? And what that will do is kind of release that impulse that's kind of held trapped, right? And you can find out where it's coming from. And what if there's fear about finding out where, where it's yes, coming from? Yes, that's the fear, right? So these are all the things we got to kind of slowly come to terms with. Okay, so I'm going to see. That's who that is. That's who's over there that I really want to stab. So there it's really an inquiry, right? What does the energy do? What is it? Like it might feel like your power or your strength or your oh, whatever it is. And, you know, what's the story in it? Who is it kind of aimed at and how come? And, you know, all of that. So all of that needs to be brought into the light. And doing so will allow it to open. And just like Ohm Trout's um, regret, we can see is already pointing to her love. And if you follow the path, it will take you eventually through all the feelings to the love. So every reaction is going to bring you to something real. Now, you don't know that yet. That's kind of a hypothesis. But what you can check it out. And I know what the fear is of what I'm going to find there too. Uh -huh. So, because when I started talking to you right now, that was just a lot of pain. Mm. But I was just, you know, no, don't go there, don't go there. Kind mm. of yes. happen. So yeah. then it's to dive into the pain and then that will unfold too into something else. Quite possibly, but also to understand something about it. Because from what you said, it sounds like part of the pain is from not letting yourself go there. Or were you, yeah, anyway, I'm not sure I got that. Maybe there's, you're saying that there's a pain there that you also don't want to go towards. Yes. It's... Yes. Okay. Yeah, I understand. Right. Yeah. I yes. Is. Right. So there's anger and then there's, of course, pain because probably there wouldn't be that wanting to stab unless there was some kind of pain that it's a reaction to. So this is all kind of part of following it more deeply, following the reactions into the different layers. Thank you. And it's good to go, yeah, you're welcome. It's good to go slowly with it, you know. And sometimes, as you say, it'll come out with an explosion. Often when something's been corked up for a while, it does. But usually that works out okay. Thank you. 
Hey, Mia, you're welcome. Thank you for your question. Yeah, we have maybe time for one more, if anyone has anything. This is such an interesting and challenging territory, right? So it's also not that the, so this is all part of what we're talking about here is part of finding out more the what of it. Like, what is this feeling? What does it do? How does it operate? And that's also just a step in the inquiry, right? course, how come it's here? That will lead you into even deeper kind of paths. So it's all, um, all part of the journey. A rich unfolding Sue. Quick one. Hi. Um, yeah, just to say that uh, what I realized was that some feelings I've learned to feel mm -hmm. and other feelings I'm at the beginning with. And the feeling that I've got now and most of this call and at the beginning is anxiety, mm -hmm. like all in the arms and across the chest, down the arms. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting, so then I thought, oh, well, this is a feeling I don't feel, but I think most of the previous feelings, which I've learned to feel, started with anxiety, like the lid. You were talking about the lid. Mm -hmm. It's like this lid on something else. Mm -hmm. The anxiety is like it's like going like this to stop something else. Right. Right. And then it's um, so then I sort of get curious about what else, you know, yeah. what what is there, and there is like. It sort of and it sort of feels like it opens up to a massive thing of of both a defense like if I force myself to go there there you go yeah then the hatred can come up you know of just like this this hatred um if I force myself to put up with something or mm -hmm. you know like uh not make make it import not make it matter mm -hmm then I can feel that hardness of heart, you know, like that defensive. And mm. if I go there, it feels like, like such a deep wound. Mm. It's almost like the exploration would need to be like there's sort of that defensive layer, but for a reason, like you kept saying, yeah. why do you need to have a lid? Why do you need? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So each reaction, you know, is kind of a step in the unfolding. And if any reaction, it's a reaction to something. So we first got to get to the reaction itself, like find out what that is. And the one that sounds like you see, you use your anxiety example. So one thing is just legitimately the anxiety itself. Like, oh, what is that? What's that about? And then there is the fact that, oh, that anxiety is there because underneath there's some kind of hatred, right? And that hatred is there because, oh, I'm kind of putting up with something I don't want to put up with, right? So it's kind of, you keep following, exploring the meaning of it. So in each step, you, in a way, what ultimately the goal, what I said right at the beginning is you want to find out what's true. Like, oh, what really are you anxious about? Like, oh, what really do you hate? What is this hatred about? And let it kind of take you to what's really the truth of it. Yeah. Yeah, because it's almost like it's sort of, when you see the total landscape, mm -hmm. as opposed to sort of one piece of it, you know, mm -hmm. like you can, it, it's actually, it's almost like all of them need to be understood because it's a constellation. Yes. Isn't it? It's exactly. not the one thing. Thread. Exactly. It's a totality. Yeah. Very true. Yeah, very, very powerful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for your question. All right, everybody. Yeah. Kind of exciting, exhilarating, challenging stuff is all of that really looking about reactions. So I want to thank you for coming along.
lovely to be with you again. Um, we'll be on in about a month again um, with this forum. And as usual, if you have any questions or suggestions or anything else you'd like to see here, please feel free to be in touch. I really love to hear from you. And the recording of this and all the kind of previous dive in with Doms are all on the YouTube channel. So really, if you want to see them all, you can go and browse through different meetings. We have set it up in such a way now with many of them and increasingly with more of them that you can, you know, go and find detailed topics like not quite minute by minute, but, you know, sort of in quite in depth. So you can go and find the bits that are really of interest to you. Um, so that's a resource that's there and you can subscribe and share and let other people know about it too, if you think that would be helpful. So thank you for your interest in inquiry, for your interest in the truth. Um, and until next time, wish you well. Thank you, Dominic, Thanks, very Dominic. much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Don. Oh, Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Until thank next time. You.